Hi, welcome back to this channel. Now, it's been a long time since I've last posted on this channel. If you recall back on my last post in April 2022, we can see that the market have developed quite extensively with you know high inflation numbers and unprecedented acceleration of interest rate hikes. And also there's like this imminent recession talks within the community. But you know, market is always in flux. We don't really know what's going to happen in the future. And here I am, you know, providing you high quality research based on what I know and giving you this uh, value in terms of uh, valuation modeling and also the uh, some insights into this specific um, company that I'm going to talk about. So in this video, I'm going to share with you my proposition for Oz Gold. So, you know, this is just a slide to show you an overview of what we are going to talk about. We're going to talk about, you know, Oz Gold as a whole, its future potential growth, and some of the, you know, drawbacks that investors should be cautioned on when investing into the company and definitely showing you my valuation to see whether the company is uh, undervalued, fairly valued, or overvalued. Now let's dive in to talk about the company. So Oz Gold is a small cap gold exploration company based in Western Australia. It has a market capitalization of one hundred and eleven million dollars that has a tenure position over the Katanin belt in the Yukon Creighton in Western Australia. Specifically, we are going to talk about the Katanin Gold project that Osgold have one hundred percent interest in and the project is located thirty five kilometers away from the Katanin township and approximately 275 kilometers um, south of Perth. Now, in the most recent study conducted by Osgold in 2022, it, um, you know, it posted, a, for the Katanin Gold project, it posted a 2.16 million ounces of oil res resources and 1.28 million ounces of oil reserves. Besides the Katani Gold project, um, Osgold actually have other ventures um, outside, some of them outside of Western Australia, but all of them are still in the early stage of exploration. And I would like to point out that one of the projects, which is the Yaman, Yamana project that is uh, located within the Yukon Craton, have great potential of lithium deposit and that is a very um you know positive for osco because it can potentially branch out from its gold uh, commodity into lithium uh, commodity and that would be very beneficial for osco because you know the talks of clean energy and also how lithium um, plays a role in decarbonization and that will, you know, potentially lift up Osgold valuation for the more in the future. Oops. Now, historically, the company have done five placements over the past four to five years. And in each placement, we can see that um, the Katan and Gold project resources have been uh, extended year over year, which is a very good sign for investors because each of the placement, the company is taking those funds to help further explore the Katani Gold project to lift up its mineralization within that region. And specifically on the Katani Gold project, it have a it has a you know 17 kilometers vertical strike with three intersections of operating junction, the northern zone, the central zone, 
and the southern zone. And we can see on the bottom picture of this uh, slide that most of the gold deposit is sitting within the central zone. Now, there are decisions made by OSCO that they are going to further explore uh, the northern and southern zone so that, you know, it can lift the Katanin Gold project as a whole and capitalize on the potential that the project have in terms of mineralization so that in the future, when this project comes online, online in terms of production, it can really, really improve its uh, potential in terms of uh, driving down efficiency or across the vertical strike and you know increase its production as a whole. Now we are going to talk further down into the future to see what the Katani, specifically the Katani Gold project have for us as an investor and also for us gold. There was a study conducted by Osco in terms of the finances in last uh, on you know back in 2022. And specifically on the Katanin Gold project, we are looking at a 11-year mine life that could potentially produce 126 uh, ounces of gold annually when it start produ producing in the first six years and also have a metallurgical recovery of 90%. Now, in terms of you know, valuation and also looking specifically at the return for investors, the net present value of the NPV have positive $364 million um, in, the net, in the first five years of production, which is very positive and a payback period of 1.7 years, which is, you know, very opportunistic, I would say, but, you know, these are the numbers provided by House Gold. One particular valuation that I'm very, very surprised is the IRR, the internal rate of return of 40.7%. And this number is very, very positive for investors because the the number itself is higher than the cost of capital uh, on my backend valuation, which is, you know, 10 to 12%. And if Osgo really delivers those type of numbers in the coming decade, I'm telling you, the share price will skyrocket because the numbers itself is returning shareholders two times the numbers it when it start investing right now. So all of this all of this points to the Katani Gold project as a very, very, you know, um, promising project for Oz Gold when it start producing in the coming years. Now let's take a step back out outside of the uh, Katani Gold project and take a view over the Yugan Craton, which the Katani Gold project sits within that region. And we can see that the region itself is very, very promising on, you know, gold rich deposit because we can see, you know, large big players of gold mining company like, you know, Chalice Mining on the left and further on the right outside, outside of the picture here is the Northern Star Resources, which is a very, very reputable company in Western Australia. Sitting on top of the Katanin Gold project is a big, you know, British gold mining company that is listed on the London Stock Exchange, which is, you know, Anglo America. And, you know, to see large company, uh, you know, large gold mining company sitting within um, Osgo Katanin Gold project is very, very promising sign because it shows that those large players are seeing potential within the Yugan Craton in terms of capitalizing on the gold-rich deposit in that area. If we look at the yellow highlight on the right side of the picture, we can see that, you know, outside of the Katanin Gold project, 
Oz Gold actually holds a 5.5 thousand square meters of the Katanin area as a whole. And this is very, very positive because there are at least 46 un identified underexplored um, gold sites that have yet to be, you know, um, developed by Oz Gold. So if we can see that, you know, the Katanin Gold project is so promising, well, wait for it. There are 46 other sites that are waiting to be exploited by Oz Gold. And, you know, in the future, if those um, sites have been developed, have been explored, and the few, and we can, you know, see potential there, that will, you know, in total lift up the mineralization for Oz Gold and lift up its all resources and all reserves that could match those large companies like Chalice and Northern Star Resources in the coming decades. Comparing the numbers within the gold exploration company uh, in Western Australia, we can see that Oz Gold actually is very, very well positioned for investors to invest in because it has one of the lowest ratio in terms of enterprise value relative to, you know, all resources and all reserves. And that means, you know, for every dollar that you're investing in Oz Gold, you're getting more return uh, in terms of the gold production that the company is going to make in the future. And that is a good sign for investors to start investing. Now let's move on to talk about the valuation as a whole. And, you know, I've taken at least three or two, pro three approaches, I would say. You know, one is like my back end valuation, my forward looking discounted uh, cash flow valuation. Uh, the second one is more backward looking. The, you know, um, comparable multiple in terms of, you know, EV resources and or reserves and also the price to book value. And the third one is a direct number that I take from uh, brokers, uh, you know, Panacord, um, a Argonaut, which are, you know, reputable uh, equity, equity houses based in Western Australia. And in terms of, you know, putting all the numbers together to see the final number, to see whether the company is overvalued, undervalued, or fairly priced. I would say that the company is fairly priced at the current price point on the 1st of February at 5.5 cents. And my valuation shows that it is valued at 7 cents, which is um, an upside potential, an upside benefit of 32%. Well, we know, you know, that the Katanin region as a whole have a lot of potential for us gold and also the Katanin gold project specifically have already pro have already shown quite a promising numbers. We have to take a step back and look at some of the risk that could be posted for us gold and its investors. What I would say that, uh, you know, for investors investing into the company is that you are going to experience further dilution in your ownership if you start investing right now. And this is no surprise because take a step back and if you look at the past five years, it has done five placement, five equity issuance over the past four to five years. And that translates to, you know, a placement every single year. And that is, you know, not what I really, really like about, you know, small companies because that is going to dilute my ownership. You know what? This is just like a punch on the face with three tools coming out and you're giving your tools for free. And what is that? You're not going to gain the upside benefit if you are going to have your ownership diluted from the placement. And that is expected because the company is going to spend approximately $225 million on capital expendi expenditure in the next three years, 
with its current cash position at $11 million, I don't see how it's not going to make further placement and also, you know, asking for more funding from investors. So this is one of the risks, a major, major risk that investors have to consider. And the second issue that I have with the company is that it is an exploration company. Now, what does exploration company do? It explore. It does not mine. It does not operate a mine. And that translates to, you know, no revenue, no cash flow. It has to request funding from its investors. Now, if the mine have or the project itself proves to be, you know, one crazy of a mind that have so much potential in the future that is too good to be true and too good to ignore, then for sure, why not just investing it? But the Katanin Gold Project, Gold Project is a good project relative to, you know, you know, but comparing to that good project to other projects that we have, like the Degray Mine, or the Degray Project they had that, uh, the great mining have, it's actually just a good project in itself. So to see the company having no revenue in the coming years, it's a really, really major risk for me to start investing in it. And also, you know, major um, analysts expect the mine, the Katani Gold project to start uh, operating in the year 2026. It's it's just an expectation. It's really hard to say because the company the company have yet to provide you a blueprint of you know when it's going to start operations, when it's going to start its production, and everything here is just talks, it's just expectation with no real, real um plan to you know provide you a guidance on whether the company is going to start generating cash flow in the future. So you know. The first one is um, further equity issuance. And also the second one is the risk of no revenue in the coming years with no production at all. This two risk is like a major risk for investors, regardless of how undervalued the company is. It's a, you know, it's just a red flag for them to stay away from the stocks. So this too, you have to consider as an investor. To conclude with this presentation, you know, we know for a fact that the Katan and Gold project is a very, very uh, promising project that Osgold have. And also, you know, back in my uh, presentation on 20 time, 29 metals in April 2022, I've talked about, you know, the uh, commodity super cycle that is going to come online in this coming decades. And also, you know, I've talked about gold as a whole, store value, you know, maintaining its value as a whole over the past, you know, centuries. So the macro side is not what I'm worried about. It's more on the company specific side. And regardless of how high of a potential that the Patani Gold Project have, the dilution itself and, you know, the uncertainty on when it's going to start production, you know, draws back investors, especially for me, to stay away from the stocks. So my proposition for investors and non-investors as a whole is to sell it, to not invest in it because you have further choices. You have so much choices in Australian stocks in terms of gold mining industry, like, you know, chalice mining, New Crest Mining, and also Northern Star Resources. Those are the good choices for you to start investing because they provide dividends. They have very, very robust um, production uh, consistency over the past year track record. And of, of course, you don't, if you don't want, you know, gold specific um, industry, you can look at BHP, which is another you know, big name in terms of mining. So here I conclude, you know, just don't buy it. It's not worth your time to invest into the company. 
And here it is, my evaluation for OS Gold. And I thank you for, for listening uh, on this presentation. And this year has been quite, over the past year, I would say it's been quite a volatile year. It's a, a tough year for most of the investors because, um, you know, most of the indexes have been down quite significantly. But as an equity research analyst, I have to move on and provide value to my audience to conduct, you know, in-depth research and give you my unbiased proposition so that you can make your own investment decision in the coming years. Thank you.